We love Italian food in our house. Um, this is ricotta that I've got from the supermarket and I'm just using half of one of those tubs that you can purchase and I'm actually putting uh, feta, bits of feta in here as well because that's a bit sharper in flavour and a bit saltier. So that will help bring the flavours up in your cannelloni. Now, a lot of people think that this is a really difficult dish to make, but it's not. It's so simple, and I make a double batch every time. Sometimes it's a triple batch, depending on who's going to be here for dinner, because I can bake it off and freeze it and have it whenever I want. This is one of my tips. I put Philadelphia cream cheese in with my mixture um, because what happens is the filly will actually melt inside your cannelloni tubes and give them some moisture. Here I've cooked off some bacon and onion. I'm adding that in and mixing it through um, just to give it some more flavour. Of course if you wanted to have a vegetarian, or ve vegetarian option you could leave the bacon out. At this stage have a little taste and you can adjust your seasoning. So add some cracked pepper. I felt it needed a little bit more salt to boost up the flavour. Now I'm adding a little bit of the pizza cheese that I had on top of my pizza base. Um, that will give some stringy cheese um, goodness to your little <laughs> cannellonis and mix that through. So um, for the rest of this recipe, it is so simple and I know um, when I get the piping bag out that's going to freak people out but really um, it's a great way to learn how to use your piping bag. So those are those tomatoes that I absolutely love and um, here I'm just, I always buy the, the full tomato tin uh, rather than the chopped and um, break them up as I need to. So here I'm just squashing them into the bottom of the tin. Now this gives some moisture at the bottom of your tin for your cannelloni tubes so that they cook nicely. So here I am half filling a piping bag. Don't fill it any more than half full. In fact, you could even do quarter full if you're not used to piping. Um, the more you fill your piping bag, the harder it is to actually squeeze out. Now I'm showing you two different ways of filling. This is um, the way most people do it and they fill from both ends um, of their tube. But the way I like to do it is I put my tube on the bench, put my piping bag into the end and squeeze and it actually fills all the way through to the bottom. Um, it just seems to be a quicker step. So um, squeeze it down every time Add them to your sauce, into the tray as you go. Um, this is so simple. In a minute I get my little grandson to help me. Um, he loves to do things like this in the kitchen. Um, yeah, so keep going until you've filled your whole lot. Now this batch that I've made, I used one and a half boxes because that's what I had and I wanted to use up all of the tubes that I had. So um, we just keep going, filling it up. There he is, little fingers helping make. Too easy. Okay, this is where I use another tin um, of the tomato and I just put um, possibly half, quarter of the tin. It's, it doesn't have to be a lot. Just stick that um, in between the two layers because I'm going to stack them on top of each other now. This one was broken in the box so I still use it. Just do that, stick it together, glue it together with your filling. So once you've got them all in your tray, I try to keep them all bunched together and then put the rest of your tin. So you need two tins for one and a half packs of cannelloni tubes. Um, and then just sprinkle those on top. Now this is the important thing, you have to cover this with foil now so that they all steam inside and cook through. Otherwise you're going to end up with crunchy, dry cannelloni tubes. So put some tin foil over the top and bake them. You can take the tin foil off, add some cheese like I have and just brown the cheese on top. Yum! Having them cold and cutting them makes it easier and neater.